hot day. Hot, hot, hot. Not complaining though. Not complaining. It's lovely. I've just got your shorts on so it must be hot. Whew. Now sit down and have a break. Just do Carry it to on. start. <laughs> Hi everyone. You can't so, get a staff. You can't. Definitely not. <clears throat> <laughs> Worst employee ever. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, we're going to be playing with resin today. So if you cart uh, Crate and Craft on Saturday, you'll have seen me having a play with our latest um, little additions to our resin collective. So our diamond resin, which is just fabulous, but of course I'm going to say that, um, is superb for jewellery making and for professional jewellery making. So if you want to have a look at what we're doing in the jewellery section, as it were, I will show you um, some of the results that we made on Saturday. So watch all the way to the end because I'll do a demonstration first and then right at the end I'll show you all the makes that have now cured from um, the other day. So Alf has done a special offer for you. Um, you know you need to like, comment and share to be in with a chance of getting one of four prizes. And what are those prizes? Uh, this week it's an A6 stamp of your choice. So Ella will be in touch with you um, if you win to ask for your choice. Excellent. So there you go. So four people are going to win a stamp of their choice. Just like, comment and share, which is just above here. And also, Alf has been feeling very generous today because he's put everything in the resin category on at 15% off. Woo. Nice. Well, the, you need to use the code, the, the code resin15 in checkout to get the discount. Right. Okay. So does it have to be uppercase, lowercase? No, lowercase. No, lowercase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So lowercase resin 15, which it just says yeah. over there, right near his head, to do it even further. There you go. Um, so that is great. Excellent. Um, so nice to see you. And uh, let's get started, shall okay. we? Okay, let's move. Okay, so um, what have I got here? I have got some open bezels. Let me just move that mic over. So we've got some open bezels, so um, you can actually find these on our website, but it also means that you can actually use any sort of uh, wire or frame or anything like that to create these open bezels. I do, actually, if I lean over here and just have a look in my little box here, you see, for example, I've got a cog here and it's obviously an open back. So you can actually put resin in here as well. So anything like that, ideally it will be metal, not, not um, paperboard. But anything like that you can actually use for these. Uh, I'll put my, my gloves on in a minute. So this is definitely a game changer. This is fantastic, this tape that we've discovered. Because in the past I've been using packing tape and it's not been that successful because it leaves a really horrible um, uh, sort of res uh, residue behind. And it's really difficult to get off and it really affects the um, resin. But this is superb because it is sticky as you can see so it sticks to the outer edge of the bezel and yes this part is sticky here but you pour the resin in there when it's cured you actually peel it off and in actual fact you can reuse it and it's superb it works so well um, I would highly recommend this um, you get five meters so there's loads on here absolutely loads and you can see that all you need to do is just press it down really hard um, and if you want you can burnish the back with a stirrer or something there we go and you're well on your way so um, what I would normally do is I'd probably do um, maybe 20 bezels at a time because the resin goes a really long way when you're doing these these bezels. And also I would have uh, a mould at the ready as well. So any excess 
I can actually use in a mold or it might be that I want to create um, a lovely resin folder or a piece of resin paper or it might be the cover of the journal so I'll show you those when we finish so I'll just do this last one there we go okay so I don't put anything in the bezel yet I wouldn't like put flowers or anything in yet because it's going to adhere to the um, resin um, blue blue roll okay so you don't want to do that you want to put a layer of resin in first so what I'm going to do is um, get my mixing cup and I'm going to use so this is a silicon mixing cup it's not the mixing cups that you get with the resin which are um, not reusable um, these just mix up and once they use that's it thrown away so I would recommend that you get yourself one of these which is brilliant because it's silicon it won't stick to it and it comes off you leave it to dry and then just comes off really easily so um, hi everyone whilst I'm doing this just got my gloves on and struggle into these here okay so your resin it's really really simple to do okay so you've got two part a and part b of the diamond resin the ratio is one to one and that's by volume that means that you are using a measuring cup you've no need to use any um let me just put this up to the light so that i can see it so you don't have to use scales or anything like that at all so I'm just coming to the end of this particular one. So I'm going to do about 10 mil because I'm not pouring that much in. So I would recommend that you don't do any less than 10 mil of A and then 10 mil of B because if you get the quantities slightly off when you're only doing a small amount, um, there is the risk of it not curing correctly. So let me just put another 10 mil of B in there so I've put 10 mil of A 10 mil of B into my cup and you just need to stir it for two minutes do you want to time me please Alfie darling thank you so I'm just giving it a really really good stir you don't have to worry about bubbles or anything because I found that with this particular resin um, the diamond resin it doesn't we don't have a problem with bubbles at all but there's nothing to stop you just giving it a blast with a heat gun afterwards if you want to really ensure no bubbles are there so you can do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill these bezels not to the top i'm just going to put a thin layer on and then i'm going to put my inclusions in so your inclusions might be some gilding flake it might be some uh, sequins beads uh, and we're actually going to be using some beautiful pressed flowers which um, are lovely and we've also got a flower press to show you so yes you can um, do your own but these little packets of flowers have probably got flowers in them that you might not have been able to harvest yet but a good thing to harvest bits of fern the odd leaves and it only takes a week to, for them to dry out in a flower press so so that's the great thing how are we doing on time Alfie just one minute, one minute. see it just seems to take forever one minute doesn't it okay so what I've got um I don't know if I can I need a third hand that's the thing I need a third hand so whilst I'm here doing this um hi Judith and Adele and Melissa um good morning to Melissa so I don't know where she is in the world but it's morning for her it's afternoon for us here in the UK um I have to say a huge congratulations to our lionesses which is our women's football team who won the Euro Cup last night so congratulations to all of them who did a sterling job in the final so congratulations girls right is that about two minutes 143 143 right so nearly there what I've also got is I've got some unicorn sparkles as well because I thought it'd be really nice to show you just how just a very clear 
resin would look with some unicorn sparkles and these are really good because they're so fine and so small that they actually do float so a lot of glitters will sink to the bottom and um, they won't do very much whereas these tend to um, float quite nicely um, in the resin are we done are we done are we yeah. done yay excellent okay so i can put that to one side so that's lovely and i'm just going to grab hold of some of these yummy flowers here so i'm just going to pop these to one side and then i'm going to just move that out of the way now on here i've got one of our paint mats okay because our paint mats um are non-sticky so they're great for resin pores the resin won't stick to it um, and if it does spill over then it's okay because it just peels off afterwards yeah, so melissa's in tennessee hi melissa in tennessee good morning to you thank you very much for joining us so what am i doing here i am putting a little blob of resin in and then i'm just using my little spatula my stirrer just to um, move it to the edge I'm just looking for my cocktail sticks. There we go. I'm just moving it to the edge to almost show it where it needs to go because it's got a really good surface tension, this diamond um, resin, which is perfect for doming and for your um, jewellery making. So I'm just, rather than running around the, the base with this, there we go. So what happens is you push it to the edge and really you're sort of showing it where to go and then it will find its own level because it's self-leveling which is really really useful when you're doing this sort of work and also it means that it's um, self-healing also which is brilliant because if you know some dust gets in it or if you stick your finger in it or if you have an accident like I did driving home well I didn't have an accident but what I'm saying is that my um, my resin pieces that I'd created on TV when you put them in the car and then drive for a couple of hours um, it I think the um, the sort of vibrations of the car just made them um, knock into each other but I'll show you them anyway so as you can see I'm just putting a little bit in each one and then I'm just going to hold that down otherwise it sticks to my gloves you see well, I just push that out to the edges there. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jill. And really, I should have rolled my sleeves up because this is just, I don't want my sleeves dripping in it. There we go. So you just push those out to the sides. Um, angel policy. Yes, we have a great angel policy. Um, you can make to sell, absolutely. And we do sell this to uh, jewellery makers who uh, are on well-known um, maker sites. And, um, Where did you get the angel policy from? Question. Um, it just, just popped. It, it just popped into my head because oh. people always ask about angel policies. You see, so I thought I'd preempt it. <laughs> Do I? Did you think? Did you think I was being psychic or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh well. See that question. Carry, carry on thinking. I'm special, darling. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> okay, so we've got a nice little level of resin in those. Okay, so the next thing is, let's get some um, tweezers. See, I haven't got everything out of my kit from when I was away. So, oh, what should we do in here? I really, really love um, this foliage. So this looks really lovely. And this is like a type of fern. So... Make sure you take a little pair of scissors in your backpack when you go for a walk. And I think this would look nice in there. And I dropped it beforehand. So this is when your cocktail sticks come in handy. There we go. And I think, what should we go for? There's a little one here. Let's put that on there and move that in mm -hmm. 
there so we Lisa go. on YouTube asks, do you have to wear gloves and do you need to wear a mask for the next <laughs> resin? Okay, for this, um, uh, this resin uh, doesn't have the same amount of... Um, nasty chemicals in that some but it is resin it is an epoxy resin so i would recommend gloves because if nothing else it's very very sticky on your hands and you don't want it curing onto your fingers so yes please wear gloves um no you don't have to wear a mask um, unless you choose to um but i would actually um open the window and have it ventilated anyway just with any um epoxy resins or epoxy glues or anything like that so i quite like the idea of having this in there so i'm going to have to just trim off a little bit of of this and because it's now dried it's actually really quite easy to do and it's and it's like tissue paper it's really really lovely so is that going to fit maybe a little bit more off there and I've nicely torn it. Oh, I've really done it in now. Oh, no, that's not going to work, is it? No, that's not going to work. I ruined that one. Hey ho. Next. Next. <laughs> so, ooh, what have we got in here? We've got some little red ones in there. Ooh, let's open a new fresh packet. That's been naughty. Oh, some nice ones there. Wendy's right. joined us late. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> You're not late, love. You can always catch up. Don't worry. It's because I'm not using my uh, flat tweezers. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Should we go with that one? That might fit in. I think that might Anywhere. fit in. No, turn it, turn it again. That way. Yeah, that way. Okay, hopefully. Got a shaky hands. Yes! Oh, that is just lovely. That fits perfectly. Lovely. Hey, see, it was it was meant to be. That's what it was. It was meant to be. And these little um bits here are so lovely. So I'm going to uh, destroy this one. No, 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 don't like that. So I don't know why I'm so um, shaky today. I have eaten. I did remember to eat. Not enough alcohol. Not enough alcohol. <laughs> what, on a Monday afternoon? Cheers. <laughs> Alfie has got a beer, actually. <laughs> He's had a hard day. Now, yeah, these tweezers aren't doing what I'm, I'm wanting to do. So I'm blaming my tools, aren't I, for... Um, this must be so frustrating. Sorry, guys. There we go. Let's move you over a little bit and put you in. And let's take that one there and put you in there. Yeah, there we go. So that's quite nice. Like that. Like that in the corner. So what should we do with this one? Um, oh, I know what we'll do. Could you undo the flower press for me, please, Alfie? Because mm -hmm. that takes ages to unwind that. And we've got these lovely little red ones here. So I think I might have to use those because those are just too delicious to, um, to not use. There we go. Right, so I was going to put beads in one, but I'm quite happy with just sticking with the flowers, to be honest. I think those look lovely. Which way around should I have it? Like so. Oh, they're falling out. <laughs> He's got daisies all over his knee now. There we go. Yes, I like that. That's that's working for me. That's lovely. Hmm. Yes, that that'll do. Okay, so 
let's have just a tiny weeny bit of this in this one. So there's obviously going to be hardly anything on this cocktail stick. Well, that's what you'd want. You don't want a ton of it. You just want like a fairy sp sprinkling of it. It's Monday. Everyone is shaking on a Monday. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't know whether you can actually see that on here. Let's just move it. No. So I'm just doing, a, I think a little bit at a time is fine and I'm really liking it. So I'm going to put a few on here as well. So you can see they really are minuscule. And you just, when you're wearing it, you just want to see a hint of a sparkle just so that the light reflects off it. You don't want, you know, well, you might want it in your face. You can if you want. That's lovely. Yeah, I think that's enough. There's never enough, is there? Yeah, so I've just done those three up there and then I'll leave these two. Okay. So that's super. Right, let me just carefully pick up my flowers and put them behind me just so that they're safe. I'm glad I didn't put the fan on. It's so hot in here, but I didn't want to put the fan on because I, I thought it might blow away. Dean says, could you use this to put ashes in? Yeah, well, that was asked to, that was asked on, on air. And yes, you can actually. I've done it myself um, with my father-in-law's ashes. I made a, a really nice um, uh, locket. I, I bought a, a gold locket for my mother-in-law. And then in one side, I actually mixed up a tiny amount of resin with the ashes and then poured it in. Just make sure that your locket or whatever it is, is secure and level. Um, and that's the main thing. It, even try it with, um, make sure you've got a spirit level so that it is completely level and just mix it in with the ashes and then you can pour it into whatever receptacle it is because it will, the ashes obviously are grey so um, it will look black but if you wanted to have it in an open bezel like this you could add something like this, a little bit of sparkle to it or as I said the one I did was in a gold locket and I just mix the ashes with some resin. Um, and yes, it worked beautifully. That wasn't me. Was that Daisy? It was Duke. That was Duke burping. I don't know. Can't You just can't teach these animals any manners at all. Right, so my flower press. So Alfie really kindly made me a lovely flower press and um, it was just about 10 days ago when we took it to the caravan and all I could find were just some beautiful little daisies. These tiny little daisies are just gorgeous. Um, and what, what he's done is he's put really long, what are these called? These screw bolts. things? The bolts. He's put really long bolts in. So if you did want to use it as a book press, you can do, which is I like making small books. So that would be perfect. So what you get is you get two pieces of your medite it's not uh, mdf it's the greener type um, it's got the etching in the front you actually get two pieces of gray board as well that you can actually cut to the, the right shape and you get another piece of medite for the middle like here like that and of course these um, fit around the bolts you're not really in the pitch, that's it. Okay, so you get another piece of medite which goes in the middle. So you basically put your blotting paper, this is not the blotting paper you get, you get proper calligraphy blotting paper, and you put a couple of pieces of blotting paper in between your flowers and then sandwich that with a piece of grey board and then do another sandwich of flowers. Which one is it, Alfie? Oh, it's on the bottom bit, okay. What? The grey board? No, no, I haven't got grey board in this one. Oh. Just my flowers. Look at those! Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty, those. But as I say, that's all I could get on the day. But um, 
obviously you can press whatever you want so that's why you get lots of blotting paper you get how many sheets 10 10 sheets of blotting paper and two of grey board and of course the middle part of your medite as well so you can do a nice tall sandwich of them and keep adding them in um, but as i say it only takes a week for these to press beautifully and um, look at the results really really good so make sure that you take lots of and lots and lots of cuttings of little bits and pieces whilst you're on your walks or it might be uh, come the autumn we'll be looking at leaves won't we beautiful colors of leaves so those will be superb oh sorry Just got my okay so that's your beautiful um, sorry just <laughs> the dogs are all over the place and it's like mind his tail do this okay so what do i do now so i actually leave this to set until tomorrow and then i come back and i put another layer over the top and that way you've got your flower floating if i put it straight on now it might make the flower move or um or just move around a bit too much so it's best if you actually just leave that alone come back and do another layer you will get used to doing layers um, when you do um, resin because it just looks superb so the next thing I'm going to do is just demold this for you because this is what I, I did on Thursday so this is one of our geo molds and look how crystal clear that is it's just fantastic isn't it it's lovely and you can see that I've done a few layers on this I've done uh, one I think I've done three layers on this actually because so I did one and then I put the flowers in and then the next day I put these tiny little butterflies in and these little stickers here and then I did another layer and I think I just had a little bit of resin left over so I just topped it up again but it's gorgeous isn't it it's really really lovely so you do that in exactly the same way as this obviously you don't have to put any backing on because it's a it's a mold in its own right um and then i've got the blue on here that we did which again it's lovely isn't it that gorgeous just works so well and then i've got this was the one that i did live on saturday i think so but this is the one see how it's it's got a little tiny bit of damage there well it hit that you've got something in the car so what i can do is i can put that back in the mold like so and i can get my resin and i can just put another pour on top and what I'm going to do is just do exactly what I did before, which is just push it to the edge of the mould so that it knows where it's going and it will level out itself. And that way you don't have any gaps at all and the surface tension will just um, keep it so that it's, it's covered all the edges. Did it, do you ever use resins on papers or canvas? Oh, yes, indeedy, I do. I'll show you what I did in, um, I've got a class resin number one um, that you can watch, just download it and watch on Zoom. Not on Zoom, you can just download the um, the videos that we did on Zoom originally. So Melissa's asked, do you ever use your resins on papers or canvas? That's just what I'm answering at the moment. Oh, okay. Sorry, you were, out, out, you were out of the room. It's okay. Um, yes, because it looks amazing. If you use it directly onto paper, it will make this beautiful resin paper and it seeps into the fibres of the paper and it just brings it it makes it translucent which is just lovely i did a a christmas lantern one year which just looked amazing um or if you want the integrity of the paper to stay where it is then what you do is you cover it with slap it on um let me just grab it slap it on fabric slap it on glass slap it on everything apart from matte there we go you 
cover the paper in slap it on mat both sides and the edge and then that way when it's dry the resin can't seep into the fibers of the paper and you um, retain like a, it's like a photograph you want to retain that on the photograph so um, in fact what I'll do is I'll show you that now because it just brings me neatly onto just pop that on I think on there lovely so this is what some of the things that we did on our class and this is um, a let me just pull this off because I haven't actually taken this off since I did it there we go so this is a napkin basically a piece of decoupage and you can see that it's made it translucent and it has this beautiful quality and it is still fairly bendable but if I put um, I've put another little bit in the middle there it's a bit stiffer so it preserves it and it makes it stronger and I'll show you how I use it with glass but this is untreated paper so it goes into the fibers and uh, as I say it goes translucent which is just delicious so these are some of the other um, bezels that I've done but these are uh, traditional ones with backs on them okay so what I've got here is some um, glitter I've used some rocks here some arch rocks that we have um, I've used some bits of paper but on these can you see all of these bits of paper here it's not gone translucent that's because I've actually used plenty of slap it on mat on it and I've actually let it dry and put another coat on just beyond the safe side because that Cheshire cat I want I didn't want that to go translucent but this one if I take this one off it's just got a bit of um blue tack on you can see that it's gone translucent because you can see the back of the bezel you can see the shape and the shine of the bezel behind it um, and then I've just put an inclusion of uh, metal in there the same with this you can then use it as a, a really strong glue to stick on pieces of jewelry together because it's not going to be shifted at all um, this is with some chunky um, glorious as well so what i've done is i've actually melted some glorious in there which has got microchips in it which is our utr ultra thick uh, embossing enamel and then once it, uh, i'm happy with it i've then put some resin over the top um, and then this this one here is the resin mixed with our luscious which is just beautiful isn't it look at that it's just really gorgeous um, and the same with this and I've just actually stuck an extra piece on with the resin after this the first layer is set I shouldn't say set it's cured it takes three days to completely cure um, but you can actually do secondary layers after a few hours. So that was uh, some of the things that we made on our um, resin course. And then this is some of the other stuff that we made. So I'm really sort of known for doing lovely um, Christmas tree bulbs and wrapping those in wire and then dipping them into resin and I've done that with the glass ones and plastic ones and I love using little bottles as well this is filled with arch rocks in here and of course if you wear it as jewelry it's not going to smash is it because you've actually um, strengthened that glass with the resin and then this one I've put a little map in so it might be that it's a map of where you live or it might be a map of where you got married or where your honeymoon was or something like that so it's always a really lovely one to do with that um, and the same with this so I've actually put the map in wrapped it with the wire and then stuck it into the resin so all of these are all the same so we did lots of those and then we also did look at this so we've mixed this with our luscious so these are our pots of luscious they're a powder and they're a pigment so they're a dry powder mixed with pigment and then we put some mica in them and then a binder so these are fantastic to mix in with paints with mediums um, and of course with resin um, and clay so you can see that I've got a beautiful pour there and this in the center is our arch rocks which are just gorgeous aren't they 
and then this one let's just demold this this is another pour in exactly the same way that I've done using the oh look at that I don't know which is nicer that side or that side I really love this side look at that it's just stunning isn't it so that is just gorgeous how much time have we got Alfie 10 minutes 10 minutes probably not enough time to show you how to do this but basically you mix your resin with the luscious probably about 70 percent resin with 30 percent luscious and put them in separate um separate little parts and then pour them one on top of the other do one pour and then another one and then another one so they, and just leave them to work out where they're going to go so if i bring in what i did on saturday there we go so these did suffer a little bit from um a rough car journey well it wasn't a rough car journey it was just the vibrations of the car i think that was the problem so on here at the bottom we've got these lovely um beautiful bezels and you can see now that i've just got one layer on that so all i need to do is just take my resin and just put another little layer over the top of that flower and i'll do the same here i always say start off small because you can always add more but you don't want any um, any of it to float over the top if that does happen you can wipe it up just with a, um, a q-tip or a cotton bud and just soak that either in um, alcohol or hand sanitizer and that will just clean it up or if you check on it in the morning and it has you know tipped up or flown over you can actually just cut it off with a pair of scissors quite easily to neaten it up and again I'm just encouraging that to go to the edge of the bezel and I think probably use a, a little stick for this and if I want to I can always put a little bit more in so what I personally do is I always do about three pours because one is to give you a base then put your flower on leave it overnight well I always do it overnight otherwise I'm tempted to just stick my finger in it and just <laughs> see whether it's it's cured um, and then I did the second layer as I'm doing here and then the third layer is when I get my doming sorted so um, let me just do a layer on here there we go and again just encourage that to go to the edge and what will happen is the surface tension holds it in position which is why it domes beautifully and you can see that you know there aren't any bubbles in this if you at all worried just give it a blast with the heat gun a very very quick blast there we go and then I'll show you the others so just put a little bit there so what's happened with this one it's it's found a bump in here and it obviously was juddering and so it has spilled out um, now normally I would have looked at this probably the day after but now it's two or three days after so I don't know whether we can actually do much with this so let me just show you what I normally do which is to save it so you would take off your backing and that can be used again and can you see how it's flown over so what you can do is you can take it's pliable enough because it's not completely cured yet to actually just cut off the bits that have overflown and you just need a little bit of patience just to cut these edges off because that is lovely isn't it look at that on the back it's just gorgeous so just a small pair of scissors just to trim that off and I can even pull it out of the 
the hole there. So that's roughly nearly there. I'm just putting it to the side because I don't want it to drop in any of those. And I'll just trim that little bit off with the smaller pair of scissors. And then that's saved, you see. And then I can always put another layer on there. But I like the back of it. I think that's really lovely. So that's what you can do to save those. I'm just going to move this up a little bit so you can see the rest. There we go. So I had loads of this coloured stuff left. So I just thought I'll just grab a load of um, these bezels and just fill all the coloured ones. But unfortunately, as I say, some of the later ones that I did are sort of um, the vibrations of the car have, have done them in a little bit. But again, I can just trim round with a really small pair of scissors and then you've got a really lovely um, cabochon there. But look at the colour of these. They're just gorgeous. Let me just pull that off. So you just pull it off the back and you don't get any residue at all from this blue tape, which I think is fantastic. But look at that. Is that gorgeous? Really, really lovely and really unusual. And Lottie, the producer from Create and Craft, was saying how the starting price for something like this on Etsy and other um, places is about £30, which I think, wow, yeah, could do with that. Excellent. So um, this was the uh, pour that I did. And then after a couple of hours, I actually just... Um, put a cocktail stick in and swirled it around to see what would happen. So you get this really lovely effect and that's what it's like on the back. But it's only had one layer so I would tend to do another couple of layers on this but I will demold it just to show you. But at the moment it's quite thin. So you can see the colours that we've used um, and how it's turned out. So as I say, I think that needs some more colour in it, some more definition because the blue's just been completely lost in that so that's that one this is the other one which i actually really do like i think the the in the navy was the color of the luscious that i used and mixed in with the resin and i also used magic sparkles which is just literally a sparkly one it's it's the one that we actually create all those lovely white sparkles so that looks great I think that's fantastic. So I'll just demold this, even though I'm going to put another layer on this. So can you see how it's still bendy? So if you did want to uh, do a pour and shape something around a bottle, you can do. Oh, I think the back's really nice too. But I prefer the front. So I'm going to put that back in there in order to do another layer. So I'll put that there. And then this was the one I did live as well. So you can see how being in the car, it's moved and these have floated over here a little bit. But I think that's fine. I could pro I'll probably put another couple of small flowers on here and then do another pour on top and get a nice look to that. So what I could do is actually just take some of my um, unicorn sparkles let me just um, put quite a lot in this one. So I can just put a little smattering of those. Oh yes, that was the bottle that I covered as well. And then, now can you see how this is going thicker? All right, if you want it to get it a bit runny, you can always heat it up. And that's gonna give me another coat on here but it's going to be a nice sort of sparkly coat with the unicorn sparkles and again I'm just going to push this to the edges with my stirrer to get the level oh you can already see the sparkles hopefully you can um, and then I used up my excess in a mold I've used a azuri mold here but I won't take it out because um, I will just continue to add extra little bits of resin that I've got left over from a project. If I've filled all of my bezels and all of my projects and I've still got a little bit left in my cup, I will then just put it in a mould. So I never waste any. So if you think we've done all of this with just 10 mil of A and 10 mil of B, it does go a really, really long way. 
I'm just mixing that up so that the sparkles move around a little bit. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. A little um, look into our diamond resin and why it's so good for uh, jewellery and if you want something crystal clear. There we go. Excellent. So don't forget to comment, like and share to be in with the chance of winning a stamp of your choice. And also um, remember to put resin 15. resin 15 in your box at checkout. And in that way in the box, in the checkout, okay. <laughs> um, when you check out to get 15% off everything. So hopefully you'll have a go, um, you'll get hooks like I do, and then you end up resin so much stuff. Thank you so very, very much, everybody, for joining us today on this lovely day. Thank you very, very much, Susan, Maureen, Maureen Melissa, Sharon, and everybody else. And we will see you again next week. Bye for now.